All righty. All right, peeps, welcome to the Observe and Report podcast. I'm here with my co-host, Morgan. She's making French toast. Looking extremely beautiful today. Y'all can't see. I might, I, might, I might give y'all a little peek later, depending on how this French toast turns out. <laughs> Morgan, you heard that Morgan Wallen was arrested, right? I did. What do you think about that? Well, what is there to think about that? He's a fucking idiot. Like, he threw a chair. I think it was mul- uh, was it one chair or multiple chairs know, off of a, like a three-story, yeah. And it, it apparently, like, almost hit some cops or whatever. Listen, I love Morgan Wallen, musically, right? Okay, first off, we have to make sure that we do a disclaimer. Preface, okay, we yeah. have to preface this. There will be zero Morgan Wallen slander. On this page, we both love Morgan Wallen. We fucks with Morgan Wallen, like. I'll say musically. I don't musically, know anything. we don't know him personally, but we like his music. Yeah. Uh, but I will say maybe he was trying, you know, to like reenact the scene from Rockstar with Mark Wahlberg, where his bandmate figures out his wife left with one of the other guys or something like that, and he comes storming in and he's throwing stuff and then he throws the TV over the balcony and it smashes right in front of Jennifer Anderson's You know, car. like it, like like rock and roll stars, musicians, especially like in country, like that's a kind of a, hand a hand. standard thing for the country artist to be a rebel and like do crazy shit. Um, I had the, I had the amazing opportunity to have breakfast with Charlie Pride. Most of you have no idea who Charlie Pride is. You can Google who Charlie Pride is. He was the first, like, mainstream black country artist in the 60s, the early 60s, and um, trendsetter, right? Ran with Johnny Cash, ran with Waylon Jennings, like that whole group of, of the original outlaws. And so for him to be a part of that, being a black man, was like a real big thing. When I was having breakfast with him, I asked him a lot about Johnny Cash. I mean, he was Johnny Cash fan. And um, he talked about the first day that he ever met Johnny Cash was at, I can't remember what the name of the show was. Like, that, none of y'all are going to know any of this stuff. You probably don't know who I'm talking about anyway. But there was a, a TV show strictly for country music and, like, all the old people in my family know it. My grandparents used to watch it. Like, maybe like Grand Ole Opry. it was like Lawrence Welk or Grand Ole Opry or something like that. Yeah. Anyway, so... Uh, Charlie Pride said that his agent was walking him in and he was like, I want to introduce you to Johnny Cash. And he says that Johnny like comes out the door and he's arguing with his manager about wanting new tires for his car. And the guy was like, you don't need new tires. Like we just bought this car yesterday, blah, 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 whatever. And uh, says that Johnny Cash like shoots out one of the tires. And he's like, now I need the goddamn tires. <laughs> And they were like, all right, Charlie, like now's not a good time, you know, but, you know, that kind of like image of of country singers being crazy and being wild is kind of their thing. Mm-hmm. I do know a couple years ago, Morgan Wallen got into a lot of trouble about dropping the N word. Right. Yeah. I don't know. I, I never really. There's no story that really just makes that acceptable. Do you know what the situation was? But I have was? no clue. So I, all that is all I heard a few years ago. Which, of course, led to... Like, looking him up. I think, no, it led to... Wasted on You was already out, but it was just out and just gaining big steam. And I remember think, like hearing the song on the radio, not having a clue who sang the song. And then I came in one day, and you were in the shower listening to that song. And I remember about jumping in the shower, and I'm like, I fucking love this song. Like, I don't know who sings it. <clears throat> and that's when you looked at me, and you're like, Morgan Wallen. And I went... No! Oh, yeah, 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 I remember that, yeah. And you said, look, I've been listening to some songs, and you're like, I I kind of fucks with this music. Like, My man puts though- out hits. My man puts out hits. <laughs> yeah. Anyways. I Yeah, I, look, yeah, I don't want to go down that road of that whole situation. Like, I mean, it is. It is what it is, man. I, I, I found, I've gotten to an age in my life where, like, I would love for people to be sensitive to things like that um but you're not going to change people you know what i mean and for me like as a black man if i hang my hat on whether or not someone says something offensive or whether or not someone 
does something offensive as to whether I'm going to listen to their music, engage with their business, have anything to do with them. Like I'm going to live a very sheltered and, and cut off life. There's a lot of people that have different views about things than I do. A lot of people that don't agree with stuff. They don't agree with my lifestyle. They don't agree with, with all kinds of shit. You just have to, you got to separate things sometimes, you know, some things you shouldn't, some things you shouldn't tolerate, some things you shouldn't be, you know, okay with. But at the end of the day, it's like, at some point, man, you just got to fucking listen to music and watch movies and stuff. I agree. I just think the lack of recognition, I think, I don't know. I could get into a whole diatribe. Yeah. The lack of recognition in people who refuse, because it's a refusal to, to recognize how when you're a certain demographic, like my yeah. demographic, it can be used as a weapon. Yeah, yeah, yeah. It yeah, can yeah. change. So just, that's the only thing. It's not the only thing, but that's the biggest thing for me. Well, I don't think that him, I just saw a story where it said that he's about to open up a new bar in Nashville. They said it's like a six-story building. It's going to be a six-story bar, you know. Maybe he was. I, yeah, yeah, maybe. Yeah, yeah. I don't know. I don't know. I'm kidding. So, so yeah. But speaking of police and speaking of bad press and all of this ties into kind of my my thought process around the entire podcast today which is public perception right so morgan wallen has had a couple of situations where the public perception of him has been one way right and then today we found out that oj simpson died mm -hmm. right now you're younger than i am mm -hmm. so let me see let me do the math here you would have been like six or seven. Yeah, like I when, remember like, my like, parents following it. Yeah, do you what? Do what do you remember about the OJ trial or any of that stuff? No, nothing. Nothing. Mm -mm. Huh. Like I remember my parents following and watching type thing, but not. <clears throat> I don't remember anything. Yeah. About it. I don't. Are you a yeah? Are you eleven years younger than me? Well, Ten or nine? How, Ten how you... and eleven months. Okay. But yeah, yeah. So she's ten years younger than I am. Eleven years younger. Than so you. I remember the OJ trial vividly. Right. Like vividly. So I grew up like with OJ being in movies. I grew up. My dad played one year of college football, and so like he always talked about OJ Simpson being his favorite running back, and that he had patterned his style after. O.J. Simpson and you know he was in like the the Naked Gun movies he was on a bunch of commercials he was always on television so that was like a major thing for for me probably one of the first Hollywood people that I'd ever seen getting any sort of trouble and then also like that was at a time where there was really no internet so talk show television was real big instead of having social media and having internet coverage, like everything was on talk show, Geraldo, like all those kind of things. Um, mm -hmm. and, and the OJ situation came right after the L.A. riots. So the L.A. riots were in 92, and that was after the cops that had beaten Rodney King had gotten off. Okay? So they got acquitted of that, and then there was this huge riot in, in, in Los Angeles. They basically set the entire city on fire. Right. So when this O.J. Simpson hap uh, situation happened, a lot of people, I think, felt like we just rebuilt the city. This is like two years later. Right. You know what I mean? And so there was a lot of racial dynamics behind it. There was a lot of like, you know, news coverage. And I think that that played into them allowing him to get off. Right. Right. Like it was just such a hot moment. And I'll never forget being in class. I was in science class. And they had everything. Imagine this at school. They had all the TVs on. I don't know if you had TVs in your in your classes, mm -hmm. like when you were in school. Mm -hmm. But they had all the TV, all the TVs on in every class. And they stopped class in every class. Imagine this to show the verdict. Wow! It was crazy. Huh. And all the black people cheered it was like the like the black olympics right all the black people cheered 
all the white people were like devastated. And you know, being young, like I didn't really, I mean, I understood the surface level implications of that, but I didn't really understand like all the deep right. layers connected to everything. But yeah. like, I will never forget that. And, and leading up to that verdict, you know, the trial was on television. That was one of the first trials that they had ever had on television. So when I would get home from school, my mom would be watching it. It would be on in the morning. There would be coverage on it. When I would get home, the trial would be on. It would go off at a certain time. There'd be coverage on it. You know, so like it was 24 hours a day. Kind of the first time that there was ever a 24-hour news cycle. Wow. Have you ever asked yourself, like, do you think OJ did it? Do you think that he more than likely killed his wife and her, her boyfriend? I don't know enough about what happened. Um, Y'all think OJ did it? So, yeah, I can't even guess. I can't even it's one, guess. It's one of those situations, like, I feel like the OJ... Like how people view the OJ situation is 50-50 right down. I was gonna say lines. what I know or hear, like you you either think he did it or you're like, nah, he didn't do it. Yeah. Hmm. Yeah. I mean that that's a crazy situation, but did again Did he ever follow up at any point in the last thirty years less than, you know, but like Saying that someone else killed his wife, or did I mean, he that just was, maintain that he didn't do it? He always said that that he, you know, there's all kinds of theories out there, right? But what's what crazy about what's crazy about the situation is that he was found not guilty, but then they, like a year and a half later, had a civil trial. Right. So the father of the guy, which I think his name was, uh, uh, it was. Nicole Brown Simpson and Ron Goldman, maybe. So, like, the guy that got killed along with her, his dad sued OJ in a civil trial. So, like, in the legal trial, it's beyond a reasonable doubt. In the civil trial, it's, like, more than likely, right? Mm -hmm. So, the guy wins the civil trial, and he gets awarded, like, you know, a certain amount of money, which is, like, millions of dollars, mm -hmm. okay? So, OJ has to, I think, liquidate a lot of his assets, one of the things that he had to get rid of was his Heisman Trophy. Have you ever heard of the Heisman Trophy? Mm -hmm. Right? It's like the best player in college. college. Right. Yeah. So he had to get rid of his Heisman Trophy. So years later, he finds out that there's like an auction service right. that's getting ready to auction off a lot of his stuff. And one of the things is his Heisman Trophy. He goes and like kicks in the door and steals the Heisman Trophy back. Yes, I remember hearing about that. So they arrest him for that, and that's what he ends up going to prison for. He goes to prison for, like, I don't know if it was armed robbery or, like, some crazy shit like that, but he ends up serving time, you know. Just, didn't that happen in the last decade or so? Yeah, like, like, you know, I think he got out. Decade to 12 years, maybe, time. Yeah. Time gets away from me, but, yeah. So, you know, he, you know, in a, in a weird way, he, he did serve time, you know what I mean? Is not um, crime. But in terms of public perception, there's a there's two rappers. You remember Mace that used to be with Puff Daddy, right? You ever you remember Mace like uh, Mo Money Mo Problems, mm -hmm. right? Make you feel so good, mm -hmm. like you know they used to wear like the shiny shit or whatever. Mm -hmm. So Mace and a guy named Cameron, these are two rappers from like the the late '90s, early 2000s. They started a podcast that's all about sports. I know that sounds crazy. Right. Two rappers that are doing a podcast about sports and it's super popular right now. Mm -hmm. It's like bigger than ESPN. OK, they brought OJ in as a football analyst. So this whole past season, this whole past football season, they had OJ coming in weekly and doing appearances and like breaking down content and stuff like that. Mm -hmm. And so it's crazy to think like his image and, and where he was when I was a kid, like I've seen this. 360 degree circle of his image mm -hmm. where he was when I was a kid being a movie star and being this former athlete to him being like the boogeyman that kills people. Right. right? And then going to jail, being like on all the tabloid talk shows and things like that to then rehabilitating his image a little bit, at least in the black community with this, with this podcast. Right. Like, do you think that, that there is re, should people in that situation be given the opportunity 
to rehabilitate their image? Like, is it, do you have an issue with Morgan Wallen? It's not necessarily as big of an issue with Morgan Wallen because the things that he's doing kind of plays into what he's trying to accomplish, right? If you're, if you're trying to be like a, an outlaw country guy, throwing chairs off of a rooftop and dropping the N-word kind of plays into that, mm -hmm. right? Do you have a problem with people having a past that might be somewhat checkered being famous or getting their spot back? Like Mel Gibson never really has become Mel Gibson again since his whole thing. No, but he's putting out movies now. And every time I see a movie, I'm like, oh, Mel Gibson. But he doesn't, he doesn't have movies like at the level of Braveheart and Apocalypto. Like he's not in major shit. For sure. I, well, yeah, but there's only one Tom Hanks for a reason, right? Who, like... <laughs> Never gets in trouble. Who, well, I was going to say, who's still literally climbing to the top. You know what I'm saying? Few and fucking far between people in general ever still, like, are still climbing to the top. You th We think they're at the top. They're at their peak. They're not because they keep putting out fucking literally bangers. Are things. you so, able no. to separate people's art from people's issues? It depends on what the issues are so yes r kelly can you separate r kelly's art from his issues here's the problem i was never really a fan of r kelly yeah like would you play i believe i can fly at a wedding at our if like, like we, if you and i had a ceremony or something and somebody wanted to play i believe i can fly by r kelly would that be an appropriate song based on what you know about his issues yeah, if someone came up to me and was like, oh, I want to play this. At ours, I'd probably be like, okay. Okay. Do you have an issue? Because at that point, I'd have to be like, oh, no Michael Jackson. I was just getting ready to say <laughs> like, I, was, I was just getting ready to I'm ask you that. sitting here going like, I, funny enough, just had this conversation with my family. Because uh -huh. they were talking about whatever's happening with Nickelodeon. I don't know. We're not even going to talk oh about Oh, my that. God, yeah. I'm just saying. So... We were speaking about actors, and the same thing goes with music, because we were talking about Kevin Spacey, and my brother goes, yeah, do you know yeah. how hard it is? He's like, I don't, but do you know what? what's problematic? It's not problematic, but it's damn near unrealistic unless we want to switch religions completely and become Mennonite or Amish and have no TV. Do you know how many, how many movies I have on a TV in a day? A lot. Six, right? 12 hours worth minimum. And I will look up and see a credit, and it'll say Weinstein production. Right, right, right. So at what point do you draw the line where I, and it's a serious question where you go, okay, sure, I could not watch a Kevin Spacey movie, or I could never listen to a Morgan Wallen song again, or turn the radio station off if he comes on there, or any of these things, you know. But at the same time, there are so many ways you have to cut all of that off if you're truly going. We're getting to, to the way. point where literally everybody's canceled. Everybody's canceled or you're you're getting to the everybody's canceled or you're getting to the point kind of like where you go at what point am I supposed to just go okay I'll never watch TV again because for me at the end of the day I'm gonna be selfish and be like no I want to fucking watch TV while I'm in the shop working right, yeah I don't know you know so for me it really just depends on what I don't want to say on what it is but maybe how it directly impacts Me, my life, or other things. I don't even know. Like you want to be, you want to be sensitive to yes to situations, and you yes. want to be, you know what I mean. But at the same time, you know, if you go down the list, like you know, it's a catch twenty two. Meaning, I'm sure if I were to go back and look, Weinstein Productions uh, was Ashley Judd's everything, everything. So I cannot watch these movies, and I, on one hand stop with the royalties that his company him his company or people affiliated that with that get but at the same time stop the royalties that ashley judd's gonna get where she deserves all the royalties right that are going to be coming off of that so for me it is kind of one of those things now i'll say a prime example is like taylor swift her music thing right and she was in the battle yeah I'm, she had to re-record everything she yeah. had to re-record everything if i'm seeking out and i don't but if I were to seek out Taylor Swift music, I would make sure I'm going to my girl's new recording. But it's like, like how, like how do you police yourself with that? Like, look. Well, because it says I've looked on Spotify when all of that was happening, because I was like re-recording, and I went to listen to like an old song, and I'm like, I mean, it sounds the same, right? 
So I didn't quite understand at the time what was happening until I really researched it. And it says Taylor's yeah. blah. So. so, you know, they just had, they had WrestleMania this past weekend. Mm -hmm. And so Vince McMahon has been ousted from the WWE, right? Yeah. And so this was the first WrestleMania that Vince McMahon wasn't involved in. So it's like... And Vince was with the girl. He didn't pay. Right. That, okay. Like a whole yeah. sex thing. Yeah. And then you got the P. Diddy <laughs> thing. You've got everything going on with Nickelodeon. Like you've got Morgan right. Wallen. It's just like you as a person, how much are you responsible for policing and censoring. And censoring every aspect of your of your entertainment. You know what I mean? And I, I get it. But at the same time, we have to be careful as individuals too because we're held to that same standard because, you know, that's kind of what my point was. Everything, whether it's Morgan Wallen, it's OJ, or it's this Apple River situation, it all comes down to public perception. The people make the decision on whether or not if you're involved in a self-defense situation or uh, an argument like that guy in the Apple River stabbing, right? Right. The people that make the decision on whether or not he's guilty are just average people. Right. So if like we if we continue with a cancel culture of like making everything about public perception, like we individually might also end up getting caught in that same snare. You know what I mean? Because well, any yeah. anything that we do, like we could get canceled, or we could get put in a situation where we're being judged, and that's yeah. just crazy. Yeah, it's a it's a social media man. The 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 world at our fingertips in a matter of seconds to see and hear about everything happening. I I was watching that that trial of the guy, the Apple Rover trial, and they were asking the. One guy that's, I don't want to say started that. I hate to say that the guy started it. But the guy on the, trial. The, no, no, no. Not oh. the guy that was on trial. The guy that filmed everything. Okay. The guy that filmed everything at the time, I think he was like 17 or 18, right? And the whole thing gets out of control when they start using the P word on the guy. So as the guy is searching for the phone, he's looking around, they start calling him a Pedo. A pedo. We'll just say that, yeah. right? That word is so loosely used. And, and the, the attorney, he goes, were there any young children in the area? And the guy says no. And he's like, well, why would you use that word? Why would you say that? And he was like, I don't know. He was like, he just was, he was, he was, he said that he was, we asked him if he was looking for little girls. And he said, yeah, I'm looking for little girls. Like, you know. Right. In, in, jest, in jest, like right. as a response, like, yeah, go fuck yourself. And so they start screaming out that he's a pedo. They also start screaming out that he's a R-A-P-ist, yeah. right? Those two words are used so freely now. Mm -hmm. You know what I mean? If anyone in, in Hollywood that's accused of anything, they use those two words. Anyone that's in government that's accused of anything they use those two words they're not using it in the terms that are associated with it they're just people are indiscriminately hanging that on people mm -hmm. and i thought that that conversation needed to be had more in that trial because it led to that guy being humiliated and that guy being embarrassed when everyone is standing around him pointing at him and screaming that on a river full of people a lot of that led to him being angry and responding the way that he did. Not saying that that gives you carte blanche to start stabbing people up. Right. But that is a conversation that needs to be had. Like everything with cancel culture and everything with social media has just made those two words so common in our in our vocabulary. I it's feel like crazy. it's only common to a certain degree, though, because look at the fucking dude from TV who were the people who had, like, 20 fucking kids? The Duggars? Yeah. Or whatever. Like, the husband and wife had 20 fucking kids in that TV show. And one of their sons, since we've been together, I think, so it's been in the last eight years, grown, has two or three kids with his wife, or fucking 18 kids, I don't know, gets fucking arrested and tried 
for all this fucking child pornography on his thing. No one slapping a pedo tie. Like, no one that I saw the media wise otherwise. Or or? Yeah, he was sentenced. Um, I don't know how long he got. I think at least 10 years or something like that. But, like, no. So he's been famous on TV from a famous family because they have two dozen fucking kids and then all of their kids are now having dozens of kids, right? So, like, there's a certain level that they're just like, oh, so-and-so Duggar arrested for this. And I get that that's, like, very PC. But I never saw in any of the coverage that I saw and sought out because, of course, I'm like, oh, shit, what a fall from fucking, <laughs> you know, but, like, no one was throwing that word out as liberally as it does, I feel like. Does that make sense? I just think that people have to be careful. You know, the the term sex trafficking that's being used with Puff Daddy, right? Right. Do you know that the term sex trafficking applies to anyone that moves a person across sex lines across sex lines across state, line. state lines for the purposes of sex by coercion or payment or force okay so payment you kind of understand that force you understand that but coercion is a very liberal thought process so like if i if i were to say to you hey i'm in missouri you're in kansas come see me tomorrow and, you know, I somehow persuade you to do that if mm -hmm. you can articulate that I coerced you in any way, which that is a very open-ended. It is because coercion can be. Yeah, I might put you in this movie or it might be, mm -hmm. yeah, I'll take you shopping or yeah, I'll take you to dinner. Like any of that could be, I'm just saying that could no. be applied. That's something that we have to be aware of. I think that people throw the S trafficking label onto things and it's like that could easily be applied to anybody i don't think people understand that i think that people when they when they say that term or they read that term you're imagining like the cartel snatching someone and yeah like liam neeson style right. right but that's not what a lot of people are getting hung up on they're getting hung up on dming an instagram model and then flying her from miami to new york and them having a relation that act itself can be classified as s trafficking i don't think a lot of people realize that hmm. i mean it makes sense though but uh, well it's like you could seems... get i mean anyone from drake to a football player to a regular person could be slapped with that yeah i don't know people need to be held accountable for whatever they do, but at the same time, I just think that we're getting into this weird area where we're using terms and we're saying things to people on the way that Maybe people, the way that people, well, the, the way that people, the way that people operate online, they're taking that out into the world. So that situation with that guy on the river, like that is very online behavior that was displayed in a real world situation right. that ultimately had consequences that people don't get when they're just on social media. That's the point that I'm trying to make. Yeah. Yeah. I totally get that. And that, that is what is going to be the biggest learning curve for anyone after millennials and even after a certain point. Yeah. Like I'm at the end. I don't exactly know when the millennials end, if it's 90 or yeah. whatever, 89 or 90. I mean, I was born in 89, so it's like I'm at the, the, the very end of that generation where the generations coming up, you know, your kids and everyone, they're going to learn in a completely different way that exactly what you just said. Things are not going to be handled. There's a virtual There's the like the virtual, virtual world, and then world. there's like the... Re the the reality, like literally the matrix, like, you know what yes. I mean? Like the movie, the matrix, so you have the virtual world and then you have the real world. And like, mm -hmm. you know, that was a great, the a great two shall clash. The two shall meet and clash is what's going to happen yeah. versus my generation, your generation, our parents were like, you're kind of, you're in that real world. And then your generation and my generation like are getting the technology, but we already have the fucking backstory right. of the real world on 
etiquette or tact or, you know, blah, 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 whatever, you know? Yeah, because we're like the last couple of generations that had consequences. We had consequences at school. You know, they could they could paddle you in school. You know what I mean? Um, clearly, like, the way that my parents and your parents parented was different than how people parent, you know, in today's society. Oh, that's for damn you know, sure. You, like, the way that people approach cops, talk to cops, interact with cops, like, that shit never ever would have happened in Arkansas when I was a kid. I'm not saying that's good, but it was just a different time. You know what I mean? Mm -hmm. Um, so yeah, it'll, it, uh, this, this new generation of kids having to navigate that and understanding that there are natural consequences, you know, but <clears throat> what did that guy say when he stabbed that guy? And he's, when everybody stabbed the guy with the camera, what is he saying? This isn't real. This right. isn't real. This can't be real. It's like, no, motherfucker, it's real. Like, that is a real consequence of you running up on somebody mm -hmm. who ain't playing your fucking game. Yeah. Where does that responsibility therein lie, right? Like, I know I try to talk to, you know, one of my nieces all the time about when she gives me the tea, right? And she does, same with you. She gives us the tea, what's going on in school. And, you know, I just, I know I say just hearing the things that happen and go on and all of that, but where does that responsibility lie? Because of course it's easy for me to be like the parents. I just, I don't know. But when you talk to, listen, I'm not calling out no. a specific family, <clears throat> right? But when you talk to parents, what do they say when you're like, Hey, do you have these conversations with your kids? It, clearly they're not saying yes, because that's not, what you're seeing when you're having conversations with that kid, right? Mm -hmm. When I try to talk to my kids about this stuff, as brilliant as my kids are, they ain't trying to hear it. You so know, you're saying that the responsibility is on the parents, but like most of the parents don't want to have these conversations. Clearly, yeah. clearly no one said anything to those kids on the river about how they were behaving. Adults came over. There was not, there was multiple adults that came over. Not one adult said, what is the issue? Adult just came over and jumped in with the kids, hooping and hollering towards the guy. There was no conversation. There was no attempt to de-escalate anything. So you're saying that the responsibility is on the parents, but parents today want to be fucking teenagers. If your mom has an OnlyFans account and she's on Snapchat and TikTok making dance videos, how is she going to tell her kid what? I have a different perspective. Go ahead, lay it on me. Between your generation, or your generation, but maybe even a smidge younger than you, but your age to, to my age, we are in the age of trauma. We are in the age of, of recognizing trauma, right? Trauma your parents inflicted on you, trauma of your youth on maybe where you lived and how you grew up and... All of those things. And I think my deduction from people, from having these conversations, looking at it, seeing it, and witnessing it, and other people, we are in that age of trauma, right? Of people recognizing their own trauma. Okay, my parents fucked me up in this way, X, Y, and Z, so I'm not going to do that to my kids. And so then they respond or react in a completely different way. I'll even go as far as to say maybe an inorganic way depending on what it is, and therefore there are the products of things that are happening is from that, and I think is equally as fucked up. So p people are becoming parents, and because our parents, I'm just going to take my personal situation, because my parents were fucked up, my parents were too hard on me, mm -hmm. I want to be, you know, I want to have an easier approach with my kids, and then that's allowing the kids to grow in a way that they aren't dealing with things properly or in a in a realistic sense is that what you're saying well i'm saying that is potentially i see that in some very close people around me and that begs multiple conversations that have come up where i'm like you realize you're now from a friend perspective or whatever that i am to them right i'm like your kids are not your friends i'm your friend your kids are not your friends you are their mom. No different than I am their aunt, right? Like, 
And so, I mean, no different. Like my role is this particular role. Their role is that only. And you know, my opinion is when you get of a certain age, can that dynamic shift? Of course. My mom is yeah, yeah, yeah. my best friend, but at the same time, she is my mom. Well, you have to get them through the stage of yes. development. Yes. You can be friends with your kids once they've gotten through that gap. Yes. And but... so that's where I see a lot of this where it's like, of course, you know, when my, when, when I was 15, my mom wasn't my friend. She wasn't, you know, a guard so to speak you know but she was my mom i think people think that you have to be one or the other right it's like if you're a cop or a security guard or a prison guard you don't have to be officer friendly or officer badass like you should just be yourself and you should let the situation dictate how you're responding parents are trying to absolve themselves of putting any sort of pressure or responsibility on their kids because they don't want their kids to feel the way that they felt about school, about work, about success, right? There's nothing that says that you have to put your thumb on your kids. Mm -hmm. But you should have conversations with them about, you know, realistic outcomes, expectations. Like, none of that should be in and of itself negative. Mm -hmm. and too many people look at that like it's a negative. Well, I didn't... I didn't want to have to do my homework and I hated how I felt and I didn't want to have to go to college and I don't want that pressure on my kid. Okay, then don't put that pressure on your kid. But whether or not they have to do their homework is not negotiable. Right. Whether or not they have to strive for a level of success in life is not negotiable. Right. You know what I mean? You can't... Abs Another thing that I see a lot is that people want to absolve their, their kids and themselves of any pain. It's like guys who don't want to level up and, and make themselves better to attract a better woman. Oh, God, we could do a whole show on that. Yeah. There's a guy that I work with, and like he, he's from a different religion. I don't know if it's like Jehovah's Witness or what's the other one? Uh, Mormon, Mormon mm -hmm. right? Something similar to that. So in his religion, people are pretty much just selected for you, like back in the old, mm -hmm. in the old country. Mm -hmm. It's like, hey, Jebediah, you're going to marry Lizzie. Mm -hmm. And so now that he's not a part of that religion, and that's not the way that reality works, he's frustrated. And he's like, well, I shouldn't, you know, he still has this old mentality. I shouldn't have to cut my hair. I shouldn't have to work out. I shouldn't have to get a better job. I shouldn't have to do shit. A someone woman, should oh, someone should, a hunt, and, and he says that. I want someone to love me for me as I am. And I want them to not only love me for me as I am, I want them to commit to me for life and promise me that they will never, ever leave me. And I'm like, bro, that's not reality. Like, you're trying to absolve yourself of the pain of going up to a woman and saying, hey, I'm interested in you, and her saying, get the fuck away from me. Like, that hurts. You know, leveling up hurts. Being a better person hurts. Making yourself more attractive, it hurts. Mm -hmm. And it's not superficial. That's that's reality. You know? Mm -hmm. So, yeah. I, yeah. Long and short of it is public perception, the, the ease with which people are allowing social media thought to filter into, into the actual world. We see that here in Portland all the time. People are... They get so worked up over social issues and then they take to the streets. And a lot of times people are protesting things here that they know nothing about. I was just getting ready to say that. You know, they're... It reminds me of when the riots were happening and you came home and you were like, I about saw a clash of the fucking Titans. And it literally, you said, was like... The, the first time the, that there was a group of black people that showed up. The first time that there was a, yes, like a group of black people there to do a Black Lives Matter march who clashed with the hundreds of white thousands. people, thousands of white people and Antifa who are destroying everything. And you were like, literally the black people were like, the fuck are y'all doing, right? I mean, like you can tell them about that, but like. Yeah, everybody on the other side. And you saying how they called them out. Like, the black people called them out and were like... How does your breaking windows at the Starbucks advance the purpose of what we're trying to do? Right, and blah, 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 blah. And, you and said then, and then the, and the, people, people. the people from the Antifa side were like, 
you know, we can strike at capitalism and the only way to get the answer and get people to change is to hit them in the pocketbook. And they were like, we're not out here over some capitalism shit. We're out here over police brutality. Right. So if the conversation is about capitalism, y'all need to go over there and have a completely separate conversation. Right. We're here about police brutality. And y'all making this about your movement against capitalism is only going to push the conversation about police brutality further down the conversation. Mm -hmm. And it got to the point where there were so many people on the Antifa side that by the time we got to, so we I started in, in June, July down there. By the time we got to November, there was no black people at them damn protests. None. Right. None. And I was there every day. Oh, well, then there was one. Ha! Hey uh, <laughs> there were black people at the protest. Picture of me standing there like. <laughs> Working security. <laughs> that, you know what's going to happen? There's going to be like a fucking. Like a. Like a discovery documentary in 20 years the black lives matter protest of 2020 in portland the faces and this is gonna be like me with my hat backwards <laughs> me pointing at something I'm like yeah i couldn't help it grandpa oh my god you're on tv <laughs> i didn't know you were an activist i'll be like fuck <laughs> And then I get canceled. Yeah. I'll be canceled. All right. Well, uh, uh, I'm going to eat this delicious. Cold. Cold. She doesn't like when I show her on I video. don't like it when you show me on video. Stop it. Ain't she fine, though? Boy, my girl fun. She got on an outfit with some bell bottoms today. I was like, yep. They're wide legged. Definitely going to be doing a little... Later on. Oh. All right, let me see what we got here. Somebody says, Morgan Wallen sucks, and I'm white. Awesome. First off, Morgan Wallen, that's, that is crazy to me. How can you not like his music? His well, music slaps. my sister-in-law doesn't. Remember, I really? mean, yeah, because whenever I, I just glossed over when you got me tickets for my birthday last year, I just, I just said you got me concert tickets and X, Y, Z, right? Like whatever I said. And she, of course, was like, oh my God, who are you going to see? And I'm like, I didn't want to tell her because I know she doesn't like him. And I said, oh, I was like, just tickets to Morgan Wallen. And then when they came to bring her to college last year, it was September. So it was like the month before. And my brother was like, are you excited about the concert next month? And I said, I'm so excited. Plus, I've never been to Tacoma, blah, blah, blah. I said, so it'll be fun to go do that. And my sister was just like, I think he's fucking stupid. <laughs> She's so deadpan. Whatever. And I said, well, it's a good thing you didn't get the tickets then. Somebody says he can't play the guitar. Does he play the guitar? Oh, didn't God. he play the guitar at this concert? Okay, we can get down a music rabbit hole because Jason Aldean has how many fucking awards under his belt and he don't write a single fucking song of his. So it's like you could slap people for what they do, but it doesn't matter. I have like, a theory. I have a theory. I have a theory. Yeah. I have a theory. I've always had this theory. I have a theory that guys have an insecurity with country singers that are really popular with the women. And it's always been like that. Mm-hmm. You know what I mean? I think that like it, there's something about when a when a artist listen. Case in point, I'm not gonna I, look. All right, give it to us. <laughs> all right, perfect example. I went through this phase where I was dating a lot of sorority girls. No, what? So in. Early 2016, I'm dating this chick. And in Philadelphia, she was like, Justin Bieber is coming. And so she asked me, she was like, will you buy me tickets to the Justin Bieber concert? So I had a little bit of trepidation. Because like, I didn't, you know, how am I going to take my big ass up in a Justin Bieber concert? You know what I mean? Mm -hmm. However, I like white girls, so I'm like, Okay. This would, this would be a great place to go, right? <laughs> so the Justin Bieber concert at the Philadelphia Arena, first off, it was white girl heaven. It was insane, all right? So I get there, 
And when we get into the arena, every guy that's there, every single dude that was there, every straight guy that was there, everybody had the same attitude. Walking into the arena, going through the concourse, sitting down, every dude had this mean mug like, and every guy was like looking at each other like, ah, you know, I'm here with old girl. Yeah, you too? Yeah. Yeah, I know, right? <laughs> Boy, Bieber put on a show where he did everything except walk on water. This dude, he sang, he skateboarded on a fucking half pipe. He played the drums on a drum set that went 60 feet up in the air. They lowered a trampoline. I'm not joking. They lowered a trampoline that was like 100 feet by 50 feet wide and long all the way down to the stage his entire crew gets on it they take the trampoline all the way to the top of the arena people are doing double backflips people are roller skating everybody in the arena all the dudes that was like this were like bah! you know what i mean everybody's dancing and screaming and shit like justin shut that shit down yeah you could not i mean i'm just, I'm just gonna say this my man was like look you're going to leave this concert, and if you are walking out of here and you ain't sweating and, and your, your, your voice is gone, you were trying to hate. It was that good of a show. It was that good of a show. Yeah, I believe There that. was no denying it. I left, and I was like, that was arguably top two greatest performances I've ever seen. Okay? Yeah. But most people were just hating on Justin Bieber, and I get it. If you're an insecure man, it's hard to like have your girl look at that stage and just be like, you know, oh my God. Or you know what I mean? Mm -hmm. And we saw like the girls at the Morgan Wallen concert, like it was the same thing. Dudes, there was a bunch of dudes in Tacoma, Washington. Everybody was like trying to walk around with their chest all out. And you know, you gotta give it up, man. Like your girl is going to scream and yell and swoon. And but if you're smart, if you're smart, if you're if you're smart like your boy. If your girl is into something and that puts her in that mood, you lean into it. It takes men way too long in life to understand that. Stop fighting the tide. You know how you keep from drowning? You don't fight the tide. Go with you it. Go with it. That's exactly right. You go with it. That's exactly right. But well, that's, right, that being yeah. said, Morgan Wallen makes, I, I don't agree that he makes bad music. Let me see what else somebody says. Somebody says he's trash. Come on, man. Let me just say this. It's okay if you don't like Morgan Wallen. Somebody says, OJ is almost 80. Yeah, he, uh, <laughs> yeah, it was. Somebody says, OJ did that shit. Someone says, if the glove don't fit, you must quit. <laughs> That's good. That's what they said in the, in the thing. Okay. Yeah. Uh, bah, 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 bah. I doubt anyone argues in favor of witch hunts. Yeah, wait, this dude. Yeah, uh, Lorenzo says, wait, this dude stabbed the people who called him that. No, yeah, um, yeah, y'all gotta y'all gotta look into that app, the the river stabbing. Apple river. Um, he was he was found guilty today, and they found him guilty of um in reckless intentional homicide or involuntary manslaughter or something. No, no, no. It was reckless intentional homicide. So they were, they were charging him with first degree murder, which means that you have to right. show that he premeditated it. And then I didn't know that they could do this, but they came back yesterday and brought in these lesser charges. So if the state didn't bring in these lesser charges, they could have been like, no, he didn't premeditate this. And then he would have gotten off. So the reckless intentional homicide means that he was reckless with a weapon and he intended to be reckless with that weapon that led to someone's death. So, you know, the guy's 50 years old. He'll probably get 15 to 20 years. And then there's four other counts of reckless endangerment with the weapon towards the four other people that he stabbed. So more than likely, you know, that's, that's a life sentence. Even if he gets 25, 30 years, he's 50 years old. That's basically life. Yeah. So... Very important for security guards, if you're watching this, if, if you've stayed on this long and gotten through all the Morgan Wallen talk. Um, that's something that I'm going to make a video about later on today because you have to think about your interactions with people. If you 
are detaining someone, if you're stopping someone, if you're making a, um, you know, a citizen's arrest under your authority as a security guard, you know, you can do something reckless that could lead to someone's death. I think a lot of times you look at it cut and dry. Did you murder this person? Did you intend to harm this person? Doesn't mean it doesn't matter what your intentions are. You can still hurt, harm someone, and then be held uh, liable for that. So I'll be making a video about that later on today. Mm -hmm. Anything you got for me, Sugar Bear, with your fine ass? Mm -mm. No. I don't think so. Okie dokie. All right. I don't think so. Y'all be good.